Welcome to DonStigall.com. I'm Don Stigall of StigallHobbies.com, MakeSomeMusicTV.com, and many other websites including AirborneModelShowcase.com, RCPro.org, SportPylonRacing.com, GettingIntoRC.com, and quite a few other web pages. I've changed from my contacts into glasses. I'm going to be cutting these parts on the jigsaw and I have very bad nearsightedness. I normally wear monovision contacts where I have reading in my left eye and distance in my right eye. However, after I got contacts, I found out there were a lot of things I can't do with monovision because it affects your depth perception. Plus you don't see real clearly up close or real clearly distance wise. So when I'm flying model airplanes, I have to wear distance contacts. Last year in 2018, I forgot to take my distance contacts and I went to fly at Old Julian Airport. And I was just flying a sport plane. It only went about 100 miles an hour, but I couldn't really see it in the sky with the monovision and I wound up crashing it into some trees. So if you wear monovision, don't try to fly airplanes with it. Either use glasses that or pure distance vision if possible. I have glasses both in distance vision and in bifocals um, or wear contacts that are distance vision. Another tip I have is if you do wear glasses or sunglasses and you have an iPhone 10, there's a feature that's real handy. I wear a CPAP at night and I was having problems because I'd get a call or a text or need to get on the phone for some reason and it wouldn't recognize me with the CPAP. I got my hair colored this week and the face recognition wouldn't work and I had to reset it. And I discovered they have an alternative face option. You can only have one alternative face. In my opinion, they should have at least five because if you wear sunglasses, sometimes it has trouble recognizing you with sunglasses. So even if you don't wear a CPAP, if you wear sunglasses, you can use an alternative face recognition with your sunglasses or cap or whatever causes it a problem. I'm getting ready to start cutting out these parts on the jigsaw. I'm going to start with the simplest part first. I'm making four sets of Smasher V-tails and one set of Martin tails. The Martin is the Smasher with a conventional tail. It's named for Dr. Martin Hepra because he helped me with the analysis of the fuselage on the smasher and the wing joints and stuff and I had sent him some uh, vintage k &B engines and we talked on the phone he's a super nice guy and he was very helpful so I named the airplane in honor of him and I have to take my glasses off to be able to see this First cut looks good, but I'm going to get a sanding block and see if I can straighten it out a little bit. Before I start cutting, before I start cutting stacks of four of these, I will make sure I can get good cuts. Now I'm going to go to laser cutting. Laser cutting wasn't very affordable at the time I started creating these. So I got used to hand cutting parts. I've been hand cutting parts since the mid 60s when I was a kid. And that looks quite nice. So I'm on the path to getting some cutting done. I'm going to go ahead and finish these pieces before I start on the smasher parts. And one thing you want to do is slow down the scroll saw to about as slow as you want to go. Don't try to do it fast 
because it'll make the balsa pop up on you. If you keep it slow, you keep good down pressure, uh, you won't have a problem. So take it nice and slow and adjust as needed. Now I didn't get this part exactly right, which is exactly why I was practicing. I have one little dip in here, and I can take it out with just a hit of the 100 grit sandpaper. And I would have to sand these anyway, and the rudder is not critical in shape, and the size is plenty big to take a little bit off. So that cut pretty well. Now I have two rudder pieces and we'll go ahead and cut those out and try cutting a half inch at a time. See if my speed is okay. You notice I have extra round my paper template. Sometimes I cut the paper templates to size, sometimes I leave them so that I cut through the paper. I 3M77 this on one side and I 3M77 on top to just pop the pattern on. It's a great way to make parts. You'll notice I'm cutting quite close to my fingers on the blade here. I have a long fingernail. I've been keeping these fingernails cut um, close because of playing guitar and bass and other stuff with my left hand. But a jigsaw is not going to jump out and bite you. It is okay to hold it close as long as you don't hit the blade. You have to be extremely careful. Anything you get from my videos, use at your own risk. Um, I'm going to try sanding this. Usually I send the parts individually instead of in a block of four, but this is only two pieces thick. 
normally I separate them then sand them and then I do the slotting for the 64th inch plywood so now I have the fan and a rudder and it needs some sanding and fitting I'll do that um, before I do the assembly now the last piece of this is a funky little thing that has tips that look kind of like the Quickie 500 known as the Bird of Prey and a, some other or some full-scale airplanes have I don't know the exact name for what they are I can't remember it at the moment but this is what the rudder will look like and the stabilizer will have the same kind of points on it So I'm going to practice on one of these curved pieces before I start cutting the stacks. This is just a single piece. It should be much easier. The trick is to not let your fingers be in the path of the saw blade. So keep it behind the saw blade and push and keep it held down tight with your right hand and you will get much, much better cuts. This is a Ryobi scroll saw, a 16 inch. It was less than $200. Everything on my tool table combined was under $500 in terms of the tools. You don't have to have the most expensive equipment on the block to be able to create stuff. So now I have my cutout fin and rudder and the next step will be to slot this for 64th inch plywood and I'll be showing how to do that. That's all I'm going to talk about for now. I'm just going to finish my cutting and if you want to watch stay tuned. If you don't switch to another channel.
be wearing a mask now. That's what, that's what happens when you don't hold it down tight enough. <clears throat> that's exactly why I'm practicing, because cutting stacks of four is even harder. Notice how I pulled it through instead of letting my finger get close to the blade. <clears throat> Here's another thing. These drawings were done in AutoCAD or Visio. Everything I cut, whether it's a servo tray, even if it's one time use, I draw it up and print it out. I used to do that with drawings back when I was a kid and in the 70s when I was modeling a lot and doing a lot of control on speed stuff. But when I started learning the drawing programs, I found out how much easier it was. My good friend Jim Katz draws everything he does up in AutoCAD. He's building a full-scale fly baby and it's impressive as it can be. He's already built a boat, I think, out of mahogany. Uh, he's a master craftsman. He came to my dad's shop a lot when my dad was producing the Stigall minnows and uh, he credits my dad with a lot of things he learned but Jim is taking it way beyond what he learned in our shop and I've learned a lot from him since. downside again. Can't make that mistake. You absolutely must hold it down tight or the back and forth motion will pop it up and mess up your parts and possibly injure you. Scroll saws, anything that cuts is dangerous. When I was about, uh, I think I was in the fifth grade, I had built a T-tail rivets and it had a Golden Bee engine on it and I was flying it at a uh, baseball diamond at school. I reached over the prop and it caused this cut on my hand. It came real close to an artery. I spent about five hours in the hospital in the ER. Model airplane props are dangerous. Electric motors are even more dangerous than gas engines in my opinion because if you start one, I cut the corner off of a uh, I cut the corner off of a dining room table with one one time demonstrating it to my dad because it jumped out of my hands and it took the corner right off of it.
You can take material off, but you can't put material on. chest for leverage. Driving with your hands is much more precise. I need to get closer to the blade from the hold down point. I may run out of space since this is only a 16 inch. That looks like I have enough. In 30 minutes I have the tail cut out this is what the stabilizer looks like and this is what the tail will look like the stabilizer will look like and this is actually a pretty cool looking airplane I'll be doing a build series on it it'll be documented on the NMPRA forums on rcpro.org and cigarhobbies.com on Facebook so, if you're, if you're interested in seeing how this project goes, uh, check out those sites. <clears throat> About my fingernails. I used to bite my fingernails. But, and they were always ragged, and they hurt. I had some anxiety issues because of my Crohn's disease and I started seeing a psychologist in 2000 or 2001. And she told me if I could stop biting my fingernails, I could break one of the hardest habits in the world to break. It's said that biting your fingernails and stopping is even harder to stop than cigarettes. I stopped. How did I do it? I have clippers everywhere I'm going to sit. I have clippers at my bed. I have clippers in the family room. I have clippers at my desk in my office. I have clippers at my desk at home. And I keep a pair in my computer bag. So anytime I nick a finger like I've nicked some doing this today, I trim my fingernails so I don't bite them. And by trimming my fingernails and not letting them grow back, 
my fingers don't hurt and I can trim these extremely close for playing guitar as long as I don't trim them too close and I don't have to bite my fingernails to play guitar. That's another little life tip. I'm going to cut out the smasher parts and then I'll move on to the slotting. Now I'm on to cutting the smasher parts. The first part I'm going to cut is a non-pointy tip stabilizer piece. I have the pointy ones, they're harder, much harder to shape because with this one you can just shape it this way and shape it around this way and it's very easy. So the first smasher tail I build is going to have the non-pointy tips.
although I'm not doing it, wear safety goggles when using a scroll saw because the blades can break and hit you in the face or in the eye. Especially if you're holding your head close to them like I'm doing right now. Anytime you can cut parallel surfaces, do those first. Pretty doggone good cuts. Laser cutting's nice, but for prototypes and one-offs, you can hand cut your stuff if you're careful. So now I have a half with the regular tips cut and I'm going to cut the curved tips which this will be the hardest cut I do. <clears throat> I sped the saw up some because 
it was being too much work, let the saw do the work for you. You still have to work, you have to hold it down, but tune the, tune the saw to do the work. Now I have two sets of Smasher V-Tail halves and with two different kinds of tips, only one set of the non-pointy tips. These are mine. I have to ship some kits to a customer in New Zealand today, so I'm not going to cut the other parts just now. I'll save those. For after I do the slotting of the <clears throat> I'll say that for after I do the slotting of the leading and trailing edge for the um, 64th plow and the way you separate these is with the 3M77 they'll just pop right off you may have to use a knife to separate them if you get a little bit too much glue on them. But to be able to do the 64th, they got to be separated. I'm using X-Acto knife to make that easier to do. Now I'm going to go get an X-Acto knife for those. The paper usually pulls right off as long as you don't put too much 3M77 on it. Fingernails come in handy.
if you have paper left on the 3m77 all you gotta do is kind of pull it off and hit with some sandpaper under grit take the paper right off I knew these would be the hardest to separate as well. Now I'm going to show you how to slot tail surfaces for 64th inch plywood. I'm going to get my parts over here so they're convenient. And I have scraps of balsa from where I cut them out. And I'm going to use that in the setup to do the slotting. You want your trailing edges especially sharp on racing planes for maximum speed. And by putting 64th inch plywood in them, you can sharpen them to almost razor sharpness. The trick is having the right tools. This is the little blade that Dremel used to make. My dad used them in the 70s on his Stigall minnows. He also came up with a X-Acto knife jig that a lot of people copied and don't even know that he created it. You can slot the balsa with a carbide disc, but your slot will be thicker. Because you're filing it down, it really doesn't matter if it's too big anyway. Use epoxy or epoxy in a light amount of micro balloons or cabocil to thicken it up a little bit when you put the plywood in because what I'm going to do is chuck this in the drill And then what I'm going to do is move the table up reasonably close to it. Once again, as I've said before, saws are inherently dangerous. Be very careful what you do. It's best not to try to do this with markings. It's best to do it by eyeball because you can actually judge better with your eyeball then a mark will help you. And the trick is to get leverage. And eyeball it until it's nearly perfect. We in the middle, as close as you can get it. and light the table down. Now what you do, now what you do is make a test cut. Now I can tell that's off a little bit. So I'm gonna try it with it flipped over. Let's see how far off it is. Too far off to use. And the table is down just a little bit too much. 
I mean, it's up just a little bit too much. It needs to come down a little bit. And we'll slide it and see if it looks good. I took it up. I took it down too far. When you're setting up to do this, it's best to do all the sliding you're going to do at one time because it's a little bit of a pain with some drill presses. Now a more expensive drill press that you can lock in place and you don't have to move the table. It's actually much easier on. So if you're going to be doing this a lot, invest in a more expensive drill press. I think it slipped on me. Oh, it slipped just then. I know for sure it did. starting with a complex part or a bigger part like a stab half I'm going to start with an elevator piece because they're much more easy to replace and you don't start all the way out at the end what you do is start in from the end and then pull it back and then start cutting Good, now I'm going to flip it over because the sound's got to be symmetrical and like I said the gap can be filled and we have a slotted part perfect for 64th inch plywood. I'm going to go ahead and show you one of the rounded pieces once again. I'll start all the way out at the tip. I'll let it come back. Sanding these parts is a little complex. You have to do a little bit of sculpting. Now I'm going to flip it over. And now there's an end piece ready. And I'll go ahead and show sliding So now I have one half of a stab fully slotted for plywood and I'll repeat this on the other pieces but it looks pretty good, ready to go.
Well, this has been a fun video to make. Not only did I get to make a video, I got to make some parts for myself and for somebody else. And here I have two fully cut and slotted stabs for a smasher. And I'll be doing a complete video build series on building the Smasher and the Martin. Look for them on the NMPRA forum or the Facebook pages I mentioned. And check out our Amazon store. You can search for Stigall Hobbies on Amazon for the different products that we have. Not all the products we have are listed on Amazon. Uh, if there's something you need that you know we have, let me know. One thing I'm gonna be doing is selling uh, carbon fiber tubes and sleeves for EF1 planes because a lot of people have had supply issues with those and I have a perfectly matched set and I have tubes that fit in other planes. So thanks for watching. Hope you'll subscribe to this channel and my other channels and check out MakeSomeMusicTV.com. It's a concept I've been working on since 2015. It's all about how to get started playing music, even if you're not musical, even if all you're doing is using an iPhone or an iPad or an Android device. You can make music with an iPhone or an, an with an iPhone or an iPad. You don't even need any additional hardware. That's going to be really cool. So stay tuned, and again, thanks for watching.